Hello wonderful person, this is Anton and in this video we're going to be talking about the discovery of what seems to be one of our most ancient ancestors ever. This peculiar organism known as Icaria that lived approximately 600 million years ago. So in other words, this right here could be our grand 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 father, mother, something. Let's talk a little bit more about this and welcome to What The Math. So once upon a time, approximately 600 to 700 to possibly even 800 million years ago, our planet probably looked something like this. We refer to this as the Cryogenian period, where essentially Earth was once again some sort of an icy planet, possibly resembling the modern moons of Saturn and Jupiter, such as for example this right here, Enceladus. Essentially, for the most part, it was more or less covered in ice and there was a lot of water underneath, but most of the land was completely uninhabitable and also not really able to support any life. But underneath, in the oceans, there was a lot of stuff going on, specifically around these so-called hydrothermal vents. And a lot of different life, including the sponges right here, for example, that have been around for millions of years, started to really rapidly evolve. The first such rapid evolution started happening around 635 million years ago when the Earth itself sort of looked like this. This is a simulation made by the brilliant Ian Webster. And as you can see here, for the most part, we had a lot of oceans with one major continent somewhere right here that pretty much defined the entire planet or at least the entire terrestrial part of the planet with the rest of the planet being oceans. And during this period, there was a sudden explosion of various evolution of life. This actually happened a few times in the history of the planet, but this one was potentially the first and resulted in some of the craziest creatures out there, including some of the more unusual multicellular animals like this right here. This is Dickinsonia. And for the longest time, this was actually the most similar creature to anything that we have today. In other words, everything else was just extremely different, resembling things like, for example, unusual corals, unusual sea stars, and a lot of other unusual animal life that actually still kind of exists to some extent. But none of this resembled anything that we are. None of them resembled things like humans, things like mammals, dogs, even things like penguins and birds. All of these creatures seem to be very different and very unique, but they did not really correspond to what we evolved into. So basically none of these were our ancestors. And even though the so-called Dickinsonia that I mentioned did resemble us to some extent and even also possessed things like, for example, cholesterol that many animals possess, over time scientists realized that this is still not really what we evolved into, this is not our ancestor. So basically the question of what we came from was always a bit of a mystery because none of these things seem to be it. And one of the reasons we know so is because a few million years later, specifically approximately 30 million years later, when the planet changed just a little bit, there was another major explosion of life known as the Cambrian explosion, which actually resulted in a lot of other even weirder animals, but pretty much everything from the previous era has actually kind of gone extinct and disappeared. And this is of course related to the way evolution works. Whatever didn't work before was kind of now gone and only the animals that were evolutionarily successful would actually evolve to become something even more later on. And so by looking around at various different fossils we've discovered over the years, we couldn't really identify that particular fossil that could have been our ancestor from the original Ediacaran period where most of the uh, first multicellular life was created. And we've always kind of predicted it to be somewhat similar to really, really simple worms. They had to be creatures that would have basically a front and a back, or I guess you can call it a mouth and an anus. They would also have to be symmetrical because pretty much most of the animals today that are similar to mammals are symmetrical. And you would have to have some sort of a way to detect things. So some sort of a sensory mechanism. And of course, be able to somehow move around. So the predictions were there, but we just didn't really know what this creature was until of course very recently. When the scientists started to look around inside of this sediment that was from southern Australia, they discovered these unusual 
formations, very very small formations, only a few millimeters across, that seem to correspond to some sort of an animal that used to live inside of them. When they try to reproduce this in three dimensions, they discovered that this animal was some sort of a burrowing creature that actually did create these tunnels that they also discovered. And so the scientists behind this study obviously rushed into publishing the paper, and as always you can find the paper in the description below. And so seeing these unusual tunnels produced by a creature that was about uh, 2 millimeters in size, that were also surprisingly very close to the Kinsonia fossils as well, allowed the scientists to recreate this. Essentially this is what they think this creature looked like, the creature known as Icaria, that was roughly around size of a rice grain in terms of size, and would move around in a very similar way to a modern worm. And what's more important here is that they also obviously discovered these tunnels that suggest that the creature was moving of its own volition. In other words, it wasn't just moving around without really knowing where it was going, it's a lot more likely that this particular creature had at least some sort of a rudimentary sensory mechanism to try to sense where it was going and was most likely surviving inside these uh, very rich in oxygen sediments on the bottom of the ocean and were thus essentially kind of like typical worms today. And as of today, as of 2020, this is actually the only discovery of an animal or a creature of a tiny little worm that seems to possess relatively similar properties as a modern mammal as you and I. It's symmetrical, it seems to possess sensory mechanism, it also has a mouth and an anus, and is obviously also able to move around as well. Which of course also suggests that later on this creature probably evolved over time into some of the more modern life that we know today. We obviously don't really know what was the next step in the evolution here, and there's still a possibility of discovering other creatures, but considering the fact that this seems to actually uh, meet all of our predictions of what our ancestor was probably like in terms of locomotion, in terms of the actual properties, and at the same time because none of these other creatures resemble us in pretty much any way, kind of suggests that maybe, just maybe, this is indeed our ancient ancestor from approximately 530 million years ago, or possibly even longer because we don't really know how long these creatures lasted on the planet. And although it's quite possible that we might find similar fossils in the future, and some of them might even have similar properties, because a lot of these early creatures were so extremely diverse and so different from each other, and also because some of these uh, creatures did survive for a very long time and are still sort of around today, discovering Icaria right here is actually a huge step, because we've never been able to find anything else in these ancient fossils that would resemble modern mammals. Yet we've obviously found creatures resembling a lot of other forms of life. Including this right here, Eurypterus, that very likely later on evolved into things like spiders, scorpions and crabs. So in terms of historical discoveries, this is actually one of the bigger scientific discoveries of 2020 and will most likely result in many follow-ups to try to discover if this truly is what we think it is or if there is some other unusual worm out there that we haven't really discovered just yet. So until we discover something else or until we can prove or disprove this idea, that's kind of it. Thank you so much for watching, subscribe if you still haven't, share this with someone who loves learning about sciences and come back tomorrow to learn something you may have not known before. Also consider supporting this channel on Patreon because it does help me quite a lot and alternatively you can also support this channel by buying the wonderful person t-shirt I'm wearing right now as well. I'll see you tomorrow, space out and as always, bye bye.